Hello, friends of Software Entertainment, and welcome to part two, PHP with ChatGPT. Today, we will see how to integrate a little form that we can chat. And on this channel here, we provide open source enthusiasts like Daniel. So follow the channel, make the ring on, and Daniel, give me a little introduction of what we will do today and who you are, please. Hello, Roland. Uh, thank you for having me here again. Uh, so yeah, today we have uh, exciting things to, to see. We are going to con continue our chatbot and we're going to integrate with embeddings, trying to bring your own data into the, the chat conversation. So yeah, it's it's very good. It's very uh, more complex than the first lesson that we see. But yeah, there's a lot of things to cover today. OK, so uh, let's go forward. What have we on, on the screen today here? Integrating ChatGPT so, using PHP and vector databases. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, Initially, uh, let present myself for the uh, for the first comers that couldn't see the the presentation before. Uh, I'm Daniel Archer. You can call me Archer. Uh, I'm back. Uh, I born in Brazil, and then I moved to Canada, and now I'm here in Ireland, Dublin specifically. So I'm have been working with PHP for the last twelve years now. So it's a uh, a big experience, especially with financial softwares. So billings, credit cards, everything. In, in 12 years, all the companies that I worked on was in that sector. So at MindGeek, uh, at Ubisoft, subscription system, and now in, in Tree Ireland. So yeah, a lot of uh, financial applications that need to be uh, you need to be very secure and cautious dealing with that kind of application. And yeah, uh, I also managed to have a lot of uh, communities back in Brazil. We have PHP communities all over uh, in all countries, but in Brazil we have for each um, part of the country, so each state has its own PHP group, and I was leading one of these groups before, uh, the PHP RS. Uh, so I I'm, have been always active in the community, trying to present some talks, uh, sharing some knowledge. So this is this is very important uh, for me. So that's why I accepted your. Uh, your invitation to come here to the channel and show people uh, about this stuff because ChatGPT today, AI integrations with larger language models, they are quite important and they are rising up very fast. Uh, so that's my background. And yeah, thank you for this and for the question. And I. Uh have uh, to say by my own do anything open source so you get feedback you uh, look uh, a lot of new knowledge how you make better readme files and you will gain much more developer skills when you um, just pushing something to github it's a mm -hmm. start of a very good journey yeah you, you learn a lot uh sharing with other people, uh, sharing code, uh, sharing pull requests, trying to see what others are working on, how they are doing things. Uh, this is extremely important for growth. Yeah, totally. Uh, so uh, first, what we learned on the last session, OK? I'm, go I'm going to go over not much on these slides, uh, but just to, to cover a bit, OK? Um, first, the problem that we had at three was, OK, I had um, 
a user interface to search for help, customer support, billing, search for information, okay, how to uh, my bill payment methods and other uh, billing related questions in a forum like this. And this is not uh, very suitable for today uh, where people want the information as quickly as possible because nobody uses a forum today. And we wanted to integrate with something new, with something that could understand your question better than the previous chatbots that we had because the chatbot experience was not that good until ChatGPT comes over. And so we took that opportunity that ChatGPT was growing, everyone was excited, and we started chatbot uh, POC there. And that experience that I'm bringing here to see, okay, what we learned and how we did that POC using ChatGPT and PHP. Um, so yeah, that was the problem. So we talked a lot uh, how to integrate with the endpoints at the time, uh, how is the difference between the completions and the chat, and actually and about the, the pricing trap between version three and four. This was the most important thing for me. Yeah, the the, the price trap is 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 real because when you compare the the price prices from ChatGPT 3.5 with 4 is a huge gap it's 20 times uh more more expensive they now uh on the dev day that they presented they changed a lot of things again because <laughs> sorry they they're changing everything every week basically and now a lot of things that I presented before on the last session a few weeks ago, it's already uh, changed. For for example, the uh, this the max tokens, the window tokens that you can use for chat. Now ChatGPT four goes up to 120, 128k. So it's huge context window. Uh, so it makes it usable that you can use it? Um, or do you every time uh, use Model 3 for developing things? Mm, sorry, I couldn't get the first. Um, oh. to, when the price is now changed, that you have uh, three times more uh, tokens for the um, GPT-4. Um, do you use the GPT-4 model on development or do you all? Uh, <coughs> every time uh, develop on GPT-3? That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, I usually start development with GPT-4 because I want to see where my model can go. Okay. okay. I want to see if it's running correctly with the best, with the best model as possible, because we have a few strategies to mitigate costs on that. Uh, one thing first, is trying to get uh, the questions that you really need. Uh, that go that's going to to reference your data that you are using for embedding and other things that we are going to discuss today. And also there are other strategies that you can um, fine tune because fine tuning was not allowed for GPT 3.5, but now we can fine tune a 3.5 model, it's gonna cost three times the GPT Turbo, the 3.5, going to cost three times this one, but it's still a lot cheaper than the GPT-4. That means you can generate all your uh, best answers, so you can collect your best answers using GPT-4, you build up a database for this using GPT-4 and okay, when I receive the question A, you should answer with B, okay? And you generate all the data set and you fine tune, it's not the embedding, it's fine tuning, your GPT-3.5 turbo that with those questions from GPT-4. So now 
your mod, uh, your private fine-tuned GPT 3.5 can answer your questions, prepared questions, way better than the 3.5, but with a, a less than a half of the cost. Perfect. So yeah, there's a lot of other stuff that you, we can also cover. Uh, but yeah, uh, we can try to mitigate that uh, that cost. Okay. But going back to the first question, when I start, I start with GPT-4 uh, in development because this is not going to be my uh, end, uh, end model to be used. So I have a lot of strategies that I can apply after my development phase. Uh, so, okay, we have this, uh, that changed with 128K tokens. That is a huge window. Uh, we talked as well, what is a token? So we can understand where we can go and what we are talking about. Uh, we talked as well to keep the context. Uh, here, also something else changed. They created something called assistant. So you can go to, uh, to your platform.ai. <clears throat> and you can have assistance. These guys, they can keep the context for you. So you can pass a key for that uh, conversation and you're going to continue the conversation from, from, the same, from the same thread. So you have a thread ID that you can follow up without, mm, without adding your, uh, your own okay. chat yeah. history, okay? So yeah, but we are not going to cover this because this is too new. <laughs> so I don't have anything prepared for this currently. But uh, spectacular, yes. But yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so get back. So we learned how we can keep the contents, how we can store message and uh, fetch them into the model because we learned that we need to send every single message using the, the chat endpoint. We need to send everything that happened before. So that's where the token count start to rising up when you have longer conversations. And now we're finally here, 15 minutes so, uh, after the start. Now we're going to ta start talking about the embeddings. <clears throat> What are the embeddings and what they are used for? Okay, now we start talking. So, uh, present here, yeah, perfect. Um, what are the embeddings? The embeddings, they are basically a point in space representation of a, of a text or uh, a word, number, etc. So we are going to give the model a line of text and base it on the subject, base it on the, um, what the model understands of the world. He's going to put that in a, uh, in a space. Is a uh, a thousand fifty thirty six uh, points uh, vector points that localize this inside that model mind. So, what that means for us? We are basically translating a word into something in, into numbers. <clears throat> for us, this is the most important part. transforming into numbers and into a location in space, 
we can correlate those things and say, okay, the object A can be closer to object two than is from object three or other way around. <coughs> uh, it means we can compare how similar those things are because a car and a tire going to be more related than a pizza slice or a recipe, for example. So the model has this understanding of the meaning, what we are, uh, what we are providing on that sentence, text, etc. And based on that, we can correlate things. Okay, what it's translate for us? How we can create this? We can create those by simply calling the embedding uh, endpoint and sending this, the text that we want to embed, that we want to transform into this array of vectors. Basically, we have this, and we receive the embedding that is the array with uh, 1,056 uh, points. And that's it. That's the only thing that we need to embed something. OK. And where we can use it. <clears throat> uh, the applications go beyond the chatbot itself. This is used for recommendation system. Use it for net uh, on Netflix, for example, when you want to compare uh, shows that this person uh, already saw with other shows that they might want to see, based. Uh, on that correlation because, okay, I, I know that all these taggings are close by to that other one. So this person might like this other show as well. This is one of the usage. <coughs> when you want to compare tags, for example, you can compare them using, uh, using the systems because for example, if you have a system where you have tags created by the user, uh, but you want to show as well uh, similar products based on similar tags, sometimes you don't have any idea <laughs> because the tags are created by the user. But you want something that can correlate those things dynamically, so you can use the embeddings to have the embedding for each of the tags and compare those two vectors or n vectors to see which ones are the most uh, correlated ones and you show up the tags that are uh, nearby so that's a very common uh, usage for for the embeddings beyond the chat box okay how we can compare those two <clears throat> There's a few strategies for this. Um, we can use Euclidean distance. Um, that is the minimum point, uh, linear point between two points in space, uh, in, a, in a plane. Uh, Manhattan distance, if I remember co correctly, is the uh, minimum path between two points in a map. And Ms. Kowski, uh, I believe, is the union of the two. You can use the Ms. Kowski distance and choose between Euclidean and Manhattan, depending on the variables that you use. Uh, but they are more used for machine learning and other purposes. Usually, on, on our chatbot similarities, we're going to use the cosine similarity, that is the vector is the point of the vector uh, that is um, related in this space. It's not like the Euclidean distance, is that is the minimal point between two points, okay? It's more of the alignment of the vector. It's the, where's this pointed to, okay? Uh, between these two spaces. And if they are 
too far away, that cosine going to be pointing down, like near to zero. If they are more close by, they are going to point near the same cosine, uh, the same angle. So we are more uh, handling the angle here of this uh, point in space than the distance itself. But it's it's a very it's a very good similarity points to to compare those two. Um, let's see this more in action. I created a very simple uh, cosine similarity on PHP just to show you that yes, we can just build this in PHP in a very simple way because this just need to work. Sometimes <clears throat> you don't have a database properly set up to have this. You can have all of this in memory using Redis because when you have uh, a low amount of points that you to want to compare, you just uh, generate the, the embeddings uh, put them all in a Redis, go over all the points that you have and compare them using the this. It's very doable and uh, not going to generate uh, too much stress on your machine for this. So yeah, we can have this simply with that class and let's check the similarity between those two. Here, uh, this is don't need it to bother. Okay, this is a long time ago already uh, revoked. And okay, this is just a function to embed something. Let's embed PHP Conference 23 and PHP Conference 2022. So we expect those two to be very similar, right? So yeah, the result is 0 0.98 similar. So it's very close to one. So that's what we want. So this is showing that, okay, we are having this very close. Uh, by the way, anything higher than 95 is extremely close. Okay, let's try to see something different. Okay, so I have four embeddings here. PHP Conference 2023, 2022, Las Vegas, and Cancino. So let's compare the 2023 with 2022 the conference with Vegas and Vegas with casinos. With this, we expect that the conference and Vegas, that is a city, um, going to be less related than Vegas and casinos. That is a type of business. So let's see the result here. And we have, as we saw before, 98, conference and Vegas, 75 but Vegas and casinos, 86. So it's a much closer relationship between Vegas and casinos than a PHP conference and Vegas, because we never went to Vegas for those type of conferences. So here we can see that, okay, it's a good uh, way to compare those things in a dynamic environment. So how we can use this in our chatbot, in our domain. I had, I, I had this problem, that, as I uh, mentioned before, and, okay, I want to put all of this knowledge inside the embedding, so I'm going to embed everything that I have here so I can compare after, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the user question I'm going to transform the question into a vector. So I have the vector for the question. I'm going to have all my questions as a vector as well. So I have the questions and answers as a vector as well. So my data knowledge, all my data set is here. And I can compare the question with my Q&A and I see, oh, the vector 2, the vector 4, and vector 5 are the most closed uh, questions. Yes. Hmm? 
the, the most close questions, yes, I understand it. Exactly. So they are uh, probably the most relevant ones. That's a perfect so, idea. Is this is by your own or did you figure out how chatbots works? And well, um... There's a lot of literature already okay. using that, that model. Yeah, I didn't come with myself. Um, so I have those. So I don't need to feed to my model everything that the I question, have on my model. Yes, yes, you don't have to answer I the question by yes. the chatbot. You have to figure out what answer is related the best uh, is, is best related to the question mm -hmm. by questions that you um ask for but uh, yeah maybe maybe it could be a big gap between the client questions and your questions that you think about it but this is mm -hmm. another problem yeah uh one related to this uh we go back to how good is your data set because sometimes you want to add um more fine-tuned questions more related. okay my users are usually asking for this so i need to have a question that best correlates to that one that is not well suited so you need to tweak a lot to get the best results from this, but it's a very, uh, it's a very good uh, way to search. So now that I have this, I have my three best candidates. So I go to my database. I take up, for example, here, my user asked, how can I top up? Okay. Um, and here I got the best ones is how to introductions, how to top up top up for a friend and top up abroad. So those are the my Q&A questions that I uh, that I fed into my uh, data structure. And now I can put as a context to my to my question saying, okay, ChatGPT, I have this context, this knowledge base that you can use to answer that user question. And voila, now he, my chatbot, is going to be able to answer exactly my question uh, based on my knowledge. And that's perfect because he will not hallucinate over other things that he might. Need. No, he just go over the context and have a much closer um, response from what we need. Um, saving your embeddings. Okay, now I have this huge data set that I want to, to put. Where I can save this? As I said before, we can save this on Redis and over a hundred, a couple hundreds, you can use Redis with no problem. Having this in memory and go checking over time uh, to see what the user needs and get the best three answers and answer directly. Or you can go in another uh, another step and use uh, Postgres. I'm going to show you guys today a Postgres in uh, installation um, to see this working. And that is extremely simple, OK? Uh, and yeah, I, I think we covered everything that I want to show you on the presentation itself. And we can start go over the code itself. Now we can start the, the, the funny part and the conversation. So now you have the basics, OK? So sounds interesting, right, Roland? Yes. Perfect. I'm super excited. I want to have, uh, I see now, uh, greater visions of a uh, really working chatbot because um, in the moment, my meaning um, is that I have a lot of data about my company or whatever, about the uh, uh, knowledge that I want to transfer to the client and that the client 
just ask questions and ChatGPT is every time looking in this um, to, in in my data and wants to make an answer and says this needs super much power and so on. And now we have a chance where I can see um, that I understand questions in topics. And I think when I can do this, I also can see better answers because I um, have now more control about the answers and then I can make my service even better without going yeah, every exactly. time about chat GPT. And this is a, a spectacular topic, yes. Yeah, so what I built, uh, what I built to you today, um, I try to be more, uh, let's, uh, I want that Maybe you can make it a big bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'm, I'm 44 years old. See, yeah, what's that guy? Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't configure it on that uh, on that terminal. Um, okay. I think it's under settings and then general. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Editor font, uh, maybe? Yeah. Font. Yeah, perfect. Yes, yeah, this is enough better. for me. Much better. Okay, perfect. So, so I have this, uh, okay, this is not even anymore. Uh, I prepared a very simple chat interface for you guys. And let's, let's just make this work because I was doing some, uh, some other tests here. Mm. Uh, what's the message going to be needed? What it takes from the session meeting. Okay, and reply, reply with similar, and that's okay. Perfect. So this should work. Hey. Uh, okay, it works. We have a, we are in a live code session. So yeah. And that's it. Very simple chatbot, okay? Uh, and this is really index.php with some JavaScript to ask and fetch the server, the message. Mm -hmm. It's very, very simple. And my server just, okay, it's a post, re post request, reply in the chat, uh, save this reply. Again, this is very simple. This is what we are going to view today. And I save the message. I use the, the history based on that session. And I save the response. And that's it. So in my reply here, I save the, the, the new message. And here, I just take the history again and show as a JSON so I can take on that side. Extremely simple. So, but now our chatbot doesn't have the context that we want to use. What I was preparing is, uh, first, let's see, uh, remember this, we have the cosine, we have the similarity here, okay? 
we now understand how the embeddings works. Um, uh, I believe it's going to be good to show you guys how to make the installation itself, because installation is important. Here. This is PG vector, okay? Mm -hmm. And let's create, I added a adminer. Uh, if you guys don't know, adminer is a very, very simple database. Uh, Help container. of your, yes. Uh, yeah, you can just put this on your Docker Compose, and that's it. You have a database interface that you can communicate with. And here we are. So let's follow this just to you to see. Okay, after having the extension created, uh, oh, by the way, how I created it. You can install from here or even simpler, using directly the image provider. This is a Postgres with that uh, extension already set up, so even simpler to use on development and here perfect so we have this working so we now can create a table uh, let's follow the tutorial uh, okay let's move the guy so we can see from start <laughs> so we have this guy Okay, we have a table. We can set some vectors. We can see that we have the embeddings, we have the IDs. Um, and we can start fetching. So can see here order by uh, how much closer they are from from this uh, vector mm -hmm. so uh, let's try to make this closer to that one okay it's closer to here but I don't see how much difference they are they are so I can add here sign Oh no, don't need to. I can just use one minus this. This is the percent similarity. Oh. Where's the docs? Here. Yeah, one minus. You don't need the order anymore. Oh, okay, no, that's correct. So you can see that this one is closer than this one. I don't know how this works, but it's what we need because we are, uh, we have just a bizarre embedding here. Uh, but from the other data source, we can, we're gonna have more and more uh, similar results. Uh, but yeah, you can see that we can do everything that we need. We can compare, ask to have uh, the order by the similarity, and we can fetch only the last, the best 
one step closer to my to my uh, vector that I'm testing from. Usually, the user's question vector. So that's one point. Every message from the user, you're going to need to ask ChatGPT to turn this into embedding and coming back because you cannot com <coughs> you cannot compare you you cannot pre compare everything that you need you can only compare vectors that you already know but as the user question is going to change every time you need to try again that uh, that comparison and you need to regenerate that one important though the vector that you get from a, from a certain string going to be always the same vector. So you don't need to uh, recreate vectors for the same for the same string. One string, one vector, and all going to be always the same vector. Um, okay. So. We have this. So we know now that our installation works. So what I prepared for you? I prepared this. I got this uh, recipe data set for with a thousand recipes. Okay. And here inside you have some Christmas pie, Christmas pudding, and a lot of lot of other things. Okay vegan cake, etc. So we're going to try to use this as a data source, okay, to compare our, uh, our answers and use this to uh, in our chatbot. So we go back here. What I created, I created some classes for you guys. Okay, I created a simple chat and created an embedding class that just created the embedding, returned the, the array. We stored the embedding into the database saying, okay, this is a text and this is the vector. And we fetch the similar. So this is a vector that I want you to compare. And this is, uh, I want the top three questions more closed in distance from that vector that I provide to you. And from this, I get the text. And that's it. And I use that text in the model. Um, and the history, just save the history and get the history. Just to not have another database layer to save the masters in, etc. Could be that way. I just didn't change from the previous example. OK? So. Now we have here, so let's build the server. Now the server, when I have the message to reply the message, I receive the, the message here from my user. I want to fetch the similar one. So I'm going to create embedding basis on my chat. And I'm going to provide this to my embedding and say, okay, what's similar to this? So here. Uh, let's just uh, print it out now so I can see the, the similar ones and we die. Okay, so now you go back to the server. Remember that thing that I changed here? Let's change it back so we can easier test. That was the test that were, I was running with you guys. Uh, so the localhost, go to the server, and we can pass the message here. Based on the data source that I have now, I provided a few, few ones, let's say, are they? Okay, they are not, uh, they are not, uh, overlapping they are all different so i have eight different things here 
and based on the message one, two, three, those are the similar ones. Uh, knowledge for you guys, based on experience. Everything less than 0 0.8 is garbage, usually, okay? So very rarely you're going to see something around 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, okay? Usually is around 6, 7, and things that is very close going up 80, 85. Uh, so let's base here. So uh, Christmas cupcake. If I search, if I have a message saying Christmas cupcake, now the recipes that I get that are closed to my subject is those three. So I have a Christmas cupcake, it's the number one, nine, 91%, 83 and 83. So I can take all of this and, and use as a context inside my, my chatbot. So here, how can I do that? Um, let's add this into the very first message or in the last message. Hmm. So I get the history here, uh, and I want to, I'm going to add, this is, hey, combine, uh, this is my data. And I want to add, yeah, I just want to add another message here. Yeah, perfect. That was good. Same. System. Same. Context. And I'm going to take the similar text. Uh, take the first and the second. Could be much better than this. Okay, guys? I'm just doing this right now. And okay. Now what I'm going to get is I have my user question as my last question. And I'm adding just a superficial user uh, system message. Oh, yeah, the system is way better. Saying this is the context for you to use to answer that question. And we see now what the model is going to respond. And I can get here. I go back to my posts. And... Uh, okay, I added there. Going to answer here. Okay. Let's see if this works on the first time. Everybody see something working the first time? Um, can you tell me a recipe for Christmas cake? It's Christmas cake or cupcake? Cupcake. Cupcake. I can I can Christmas. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if this is working. Because I don't have the logs for this. Oh, it's sad. But maybe the network tab will show if there is an error. Yeah, but okay. We have something. Here's a simple recipe for uh, your cupcakes. So okay. you can have here ingredients one and one, one and a half cup of all purpose flour. And if we see 
here, cupcakes. Oh. We have to re uh, use it or refresh it's the table. No, no, that's the problem. Um, when I first add, added the, the data source, I added as an array. Oh, OK. So this is the incorrect part. So here you can see how you need to make sure your, your data set is correct. Um, let's just see the margarita, because the margarita has something. Almost nothing. I want more. I want something useful. I want something that I can compare. Uh, OK, let's see. That's actually the next topic that I want to cover. OK, but imagine that, OK, it's, he's trying, right? We just don't have the correct uh, data set, but he's trying. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, imagine that you have, like here, you have a 1,000, sometimes going to be even more than that, OK, things that you want to get into your embeddings. So now comes the second part that is integrate with RabbitMQ. And here, we have a RabbitMQ web server running. And we can have our RabbitMQ running. So in order, uh, I believe you guys already use it, this service, right? queues to uh, better uh, run tasks that need to be on the background only, that consume a lot of time, so you can parallelize your, your solution. And yeah, usually for much bigger tasks that need parallelization. And here, let's see. I created a, uh, a publisher. I created a, a, a consumer uh, before just to, for example, I have a data set here. This is where I started the first POC for, for three. So you don't need to be fancy. I generated by hand all, uh, all that pages. Let's go to community. Ireland. I went here to the sessions, but I have more. Help support. And take everything here and put directly where I need with the data that I need. And I go over every data, create embedding, and start into a uh, database. And that's it. You don't need to be fancy with RabbitMQ if you don't need to until you, you really need that part. So yeah, when I reached that point that I needed to go over this because the embeddings, they can be slow sometimes. And you have a layer, large data set that you want to get more. For example, one problem that I had, this is unstructured data. So I have just a chunk of data here. And I want to have a much clear description and some tags the, and some title and some possible questions. So I only have here something. Go back. I only have here the information, the raw information. And if you just plug and play here, okay, I have this. But what I want to store is something like this plus tags one, two, three, four, plus possible questions. One, two, three, four. I want 
many questions here that can be solved by that piece of knowledge. I can generate all of this using ChatGPT again. So I can go over my, my data set and before creating that embed with that text, I can ask ChatGPT to improve and add tags to that uh, recipe. So now I'm going to have with this and please and please add the possible questions and sweet by that rest that's compiled um, so you can improve your own data set using that uh, that type of technique so now you you can see that you can uh, this can take a long time to process because you need to ask ChatGPT, receive the full answer, take that answer, create the embedding on that embedding, uh, starting to the DB. So you, this is a lot of process, especially with a thousand or more, ten thousand. You need to parallelize this. So that's the point when you need something that okay. I'm going to I'm going to need to have 10 process running all of this and now you have the publisher so we can publish the message using the rep so we publish the message and if we go publish publisher okay we have the message it's it, it's quite fast Reptime Cube is extremely fast. Um, you see that uh, on our interface, we already have three messages in the queue. The That speed is not the same as you using. Okay, gonna take some time here because uh, this is trying to not overload your system. And now you get the messages on the queue you can run the consumer that is quite simple as well just take the question uh, create the queue and consume and run a function to actually do what you need that is okay let's take that ingredients everything use as the creating batting for this is starting to be saying okay this is the text and this is the vector and we are done. And this is usually a long-term process that you keep running. So like this, this is very straightforward. You can find a lot of uh, tutorials in the internet, how to use it. Uh, I have even my tutorial, how to use it, <laughs> that I published a long time ago. Uh, and yeah. Uh, that's how you populate your knowledge base and how you use the knowledge base inside your chatbot. And we go back to here. No, I don't need it anymore. So, any questions, Ron? Yeah, this was uh, so much stuff. So this is a very simple question is if we get the sources anywhere uh, from a rip or something to go behind this um, code is there a chance to get the stuff or did you already yeah I'm, I'm going to publish i'm going to publish this uh today on my github repository and i'm gonna put this on the description of the video yes uh, please send me the link because i think when you uh, put links there it will be filtered by youtube mm -hmm. by itself so maybe you send it to me on other way and then mm -hmm. i will yeah and uh, yeah thank you very much um i uh, actually do do not think that is so complicated in the background because there are many other things what are many topics you open so many topics about uh, this uh, second in in the second part 
that I have to go behind it. I make some German tutorial video about the last uh, session to learn it by myself. And I think I cannot do a session on the second part so easy. <laughs> um, but I will have questions. And um, then when I have this understanding, maybe uh, we can um, do something that I code and you will um, help me as a wingman, what I can do, how I can go forward with it. And by, but I think you were very fast and you actually know a lot about all the stuff here. And um, when you come from the directly other side of the moon, like me, it's, uh, it, it, it's a lot of stuff, but thank you very much. It was a perfect overview. I think it helps a lot of people to understand. I'm a big friend that I see more information and I have this information overkill than to have to less stuff. So we have enough stuff and, um, perfect. Yeah. Uh, one thing that also I wanted to mention is that uh, you can have pretty much the same structure, the same idea running on Azure. Um, that it's the uh, Microsoft platform. Uh, and you can see here, it can be very complicated. So you can have what we did is we had a brain agent, we have the, uh, the the embedding model from OpenAI, completion model, that's the chat, chat model. Uh, and we were integrating into something like the Azure vector-based index here. So we could have much more uh, integrations using the Azure, who, like using uh, SQL databases as a knowledge base directly, vision, translations, images, other documents like PDFs, etc. So this can, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This can be big, <laughs> okay? Uh, so yeah, that, that's a lot of things to, to still learn, to keep learning. Uh, and that's that's what fashion fascinates me because yeah it's you need to to keep up uh, keep up learning every day and that's sometimes overwhelming actually yeah well thanks for your passion that you share the stuff and help uh, anybody out here to get in this lane and go forward with this um, super hot topic for us as developer it's super important to go forward with it. Yeah, sure. And please reach me out on LinkedIn or any platform, uh, Twitter as well. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure for me. Thank you, Ron. Okay, so we say thank you to the audience and then we will stay more five minutes in sight. But for now, so check out uh, this video here, make your questions also in this comments here and on the next session. We will do a, yeah, a session where uh, Archer will show me how I can do something on my local machine. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye-bye.